Okay, so we have a rocket burner that we're going to add to an acorn uh, grill. So what we have here is a cap for the material where we put in the pellets. We have a screen that goes down inside that holds the pellets from falling through. Has some slots in it to help with the burn so it burns fully through all the way to the end burns all of the pellets up and then we i use a rock just to space it up off of the bottom and i'll show you that once i put it in this is the blue pipe roughly uh, 15 inches tall and then this is the connector to the bottom of the acorn we'll show that later when we add it to it on the other side here we have a air intake so it adds air after the burn. So we'll burn down here, draw an air in from the front, and then it will pull in additional air, which will burn inside. And we'll show you, if you notice, we go in at a tangential to the flue pipe, which causes the flame to spin, gets a better burn, and you get less uh, unburnt material coming up through the flue pipe. And you have almost no ash at all that comes out of this system. And we'll show you how we tie that to the acorn grill here in a minute. We're first going to show you a burn. So we'll load in the screen. And all we do is put the rock in. That What that does is if the more or less space you give it, the hotter the burn will be in the tube. So I found the spacing of this particular rock gives me the best burn for grilling. I, I won't get above about 500 degrees uh, in the uh, burn chamber, so it does great for smoking. And then what we're gonna do is add our pellets, wood pellets. I'm just using a basic hardwood pellet. And you can see from the inside where we're at, I'm just about half full. This will give you at least Pretty close to an hour burn with it fully, with it all the way full. And if you're running somewhere in the 350 to 375 degrees, you're gonna get a full hour and a half burn from this small amount of, of uh, and it's gonna cap it off. To start it, I do use a torch because it makes it work a little faster. What we're gonna do is preheat. We'll preheat the flue. And this gets the air draw going. pretty much it for starting it. You can see it takes a few minutes to get it completely burning. And then you should see a flame. Not quite yet. Look from the inside here and you'll see the flame. Can you get it lower? I can. Huh? I can. Okay. Take it off good or... well, I just need to rotate it. <laughs> That'll give him a ride. No, I didn't meant to do. So you can see the flame in there. Yep. 
It's taking a little while to get it going good. It's 100% burnt. You know, you're not getting, it's not a chimney of smoke coming out because it's not burning completely. But you get enough smoke when you're grilling, it's perfect to get flavor into everything you cook. You cook a nice slow cook, it's, it's absolutely perfect. And it's starting to get where we're getting a little bit of heat coming up through it. But out here in the open, you're not gonna get as much heat. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you put it in the grill, and we'll do that here in a few minutes, we'll fire it up and the flue pipe is hot. All right. Okay, so then we have to Okay, so inside we have our grill. The idea, I hope, is that it's not hot yet. So we have, as you can see, this is a quarter inch thick steel plate. That's what this is. What this does, and you can see how much better it burns once you put it in, because you have a taller flue. And so the, the chimney goes out the top. So once all this is closed, you're basically cooking in the flue pipe. Cleaned out later. But that's what our that's what our flame looks like coming in. You can imagine. So now you can see that even if you were cooking right on top of this grill, you could do an open flame if you wanted to by putting just putting the grill back on here. But by putting the steel plate, it gives allows this to heat up and it creates a burn chamber inside of here that extra air that's pulling in through the side and we'll show you in a minute once we put this in you'll draw air in through this tube and it really gives a really clean burn gives good heat but there's still that smoke and the moisture from the wood that stays inside the burn chamber so it acts like it's right up in the like you're cooking in the flue pipe of a of a you know chimney if you will you want it to be about even, but you see it's got a secondary yeah. chamber that comes up over it. Um, I think I'm going to flip it over. In going. So it's centered, you see how it's an even amount? It comes around each side. It's just, just a standard acorn, it's an acorn char grill, professional acorn char grill is all this is. And we've taken the base off of it and added a, and it's no big deal to take the base off. This naturally, this is a, has a removal system that comes off. It uses the clips that are on the side. And then we just add that into it, add the rocket stove right into it. Gives us a nice burn chamber. And then, we'll put a little bit of and then we add our top to it. And then I'm gonna run upstairs and grab the temperature thing. And then you close it down and then we'll let it run. Outside temperature right now today. 
looks like 53, 52, 53 degrees. We're going to take probe number two, I believe. Probe number one, no, probe number two is going to go in. I took the normal mechanical temperature gauge out and I put my grill right in there. And see the amount of smoke coming out of the top is perfect for grilling and it's a nice nice blue smoke so it's it's not won't make the food taste like fuel so you don't get the black smoke it's a real nice burn and uh, this is burning right now full burn um, so what we also do here at the base and this could be changed to where it has a door or whatever on it but for what I do as often as I grill, and this is our first prototype, what we can do is we can slow the burn down by reducing the amount of air that goes into it by closing this up. And when you close that up, you can control your output temperature a little bit, as well as on the top of the grill, you obviously have the temperature you can adjust by turning it down. What I want to show you is we're running right now at uh, 397 degrees, and we're going to close this off a little bit and we'll be able to see the temperature drop. And it's, and it's almost instant that it drops. So you really have a good control over the fire like this. So you can maintain the 200, 210, 230, whatever you set it on. Now it does, as your wood runs out or your pellets run out, that temperature will change because it'll start pulling air. I'll show you down here. If you, in this chamber, and you can see it's drawing air in, as this chamber opens, and you see how you can see in the back it's open, so it will pull air through there. If this chamber is full of pellets, then you won't have to worry about it drawing air through here. And then your, your two air intakes, air intake here and air outlet up here, will control your burn really well. But as, as this opens up and gets air, it'll change your your temperature will have to be adjusted accordingly but keep it full and and then you can adjust your temperatures on either side and i'm going to leave this completely open just so we can see what kind of burn we can get because right now we dropped it all the way down to 376 from what 390 yeah, 390 yeah. so i mean it's just just adjusting that slightly will uh, make the temperature change and then you'll see as i open it up the temperature will come back up almost instantly. So it's very easy to control the temperature. Keep your burn where you want it. And as you know, you may have noticed, as you, as you control your burn, you're gonna get a little more smoke because the fire is not burning as efficiently. If you drop, if you change your air flows, your fire doesn't burn as efficiently, therefore producing more smoke, producing. You see the temperature now, we're at 429, 430, and it's just a few minutes. And as that, as that plate heats up inside of there, that temperature will, will really maintain well directly underneath the food. For and if you listen, you can hear the rocket. Look at the temperature. We're clearly at 500. I've, I've had the temperature up to, well, this, this temperature gauge only goes to 577 and I've had it go over temp on it um, as far as just watching it get hot enough. Also, if the, the rock size that's in the bottom, if it's changed, if this rock size that's holding this chamber up is changed to where it's only maybe a quarter inch off the base, then you get even, a, there's more pellets exposed to the air and you can get this well, it easily into a thousand degrees. So you can cook pizza in here with no problem.